The 2023 Formula One season is shaping up to be one of the most exciting in recent memory. And if the Bahrain Grand Prix is anything to go by, it seems that we're in for a real treat. In a stunning display of skill and determination, Fernando Alonso proved himself to be Red Bull's closest competitor, raising the question, can the two-time world champion really challenge Max Verstappen for the 2023 F1 title? The Bahrain Grand Prix was a race that provided plenty of drama and excitement, but perhaps most notably, it gave fans a glimpse into what the 2023 season could hold. The performance of Fernando Alonso in particular was a highlight, with the two-time world champion showing that he still has the skill and determination to compete at the highest level. The Aston Martin team stunned onlookers with their impressive speed and agility. Their car was the second fastest race package on the grid, and it was the effervescent Fernando Alonso who showcased the car's potential, recovering from a slow start to expertly overtake both Mercedes drivers and his compatriot Carlos Sainz. Even Lance Stroll, who suffered a near-disastrous incident with Alonso at Turn 4, managed to secure a solid 6th place finish despite his wrist injuries and lack of preseason running. Aston Martin's success is all the more remarkable when you consider that they only switched to a Red Bull-inspired design philosophy in the early mid-2022, opening up new design routes and bolstering their team with high-profile signings. They signed Dan Fallows from Red Bull and Eric Blandin from Mercedes, while Aston Martin itself has a long-standing relationship with Mercedes. About the pace of the AMR23, Alonso stated, It's too good to be true. You're always expecting something you know will get a step back and get back to reality, but it seems real, the performance. Let's see in Jeddah. I'm curious to go to Jeddah and Australia. They're different circuits. I think Max touched on before. High-speed corners, very little degradation. I think in Bahrain, we were strong on things we may not find in Jeddah and Australia. So if we are strong in the next two races, I think we will have a very good 2023. Fernando Alonso's impressive performance in the race suggested that his decade-long wait for a 33rd career victory could finally come to an end. However, as for a sustained title threat, it's a different story altogether. Despite their outstanding year-on-year -year turnaround, it's clear that Aston Martin is still on a journey towards such ambitions, and a title tilt in the 2023 season may be a fanciful proposition. Aston Martin boss Mike Crack said, We don't know how much management the Red Bull had to do and did. I think it was quite comfortable for them just to get the mandatory tyres through and get the race to the end. We wanted to take a step forward. We did not say we want to beat Red Bull. Again, let's keep our feet on the ground. Let's work hard. It could be that in Jeddah, we may be fourth or fifth or sixth in terms of team rankings. I think let's enjoy today and we will continue to see how it goes on. After Sunday's race, Max Verstappen was asked if he would like to see Fernando Alonso challenge for the title in the 2023 Formula 1 season. In response, Verstappen expressed his admiration for the two-time world champion and suggested that he would be glad to see Alonso back at the front after some difficult seasons for him. Verstappen said, I hope so for Fernando as well, because he has had a few years where he has not really had a possibility to fight at the front, so I'm happy to see him sitting here already in race 1. With Alonso and Lance Stroll finishing in P3 and P6 respectively for Aston Martin, Verstappen spoke highly of the British outfit. He commented, At Aston Martin, they really have the spirit and drive. They want to win, and they've hired a lot of good people, so I guess it can only get better for them. The Dutchman would not rule out the possibility of Alonso's team claiming some victories during the 2023 campaign. He continued, For this year, it's difficult to say if they're going to challenge for the championship, but race wins are definitely on the table. I've been in the same position where some races I'm finishing 20 to 40 seconds behind the winners, and you can still win two or three races a year, because sometimes there are some tracks which really suit your car and everything just comes together. And you can win a race with maybe sometimes a bit of help or luck. But for sure, they have a really strong package. And now, of course, it's all about developing it further. When Lawrence Stroll announced the return of the Aston Martin name to the Formula One grid in 2021, many expected big things from the Silverstone-based team. After all, the team was coming off its most successful season to date, with a maiden win and three podiums. However, the team's return to the sport was about as unspectacular as the debut entry of the iconic British marquee in the mid-1950s. Despite the acquisition of four-time world champion and 53-time F1 race winner Sebastian Vettel, Aston Martin, like engine supplier Mercedes, was caught out by a minor but significant alteration to the technical rules that hit it harder than its competitors. As a result, the team slipped back in the points and standings and scored a massive 118 points less than the previous season. While Vettel did manage to claim Aston Martin's first ever F1 podium, it was clear that the team still had a long way to go to achieve the level of success that was expected of them. Despite its regression down the order, there remained little reason to panic as the impending introduction of an overhaul to the regulations presented the entire grid with a clean slate. For a team that became synonymous with utilizing its cash-strapped resources under previous guises, the investment brought to the table by the senior stroll has allowed the side to operate right on the brink of the cost cap since the regulation was introduced to the sport at the start of the 2021 season. 
Whereas previously the team had been populously recognised as a plucky underdog in the days of Jordan and Force India, the transition to Aston Martin and the attempts to perform like the big teams had the undesired impact of creating a side unrecognisable from its formative years. Trouble immediately appeared on the cards even in the infant stages last year when the technical team outlined the car at testing resembled nothing like the one that was in the wind tunnel. The situation became so disastrous that Aston Martin sat bottom of the pile as the only team yet to score a point after the opening three rounds. Thankfully, a double points haul next time out in Imola would be the beginning of the team's fortunes beginning to reverse for the better. Despite a late season push that saw them come close to overtaking Alfa Romeo for sixth place in the championship, the team finished a distant 118 points behind the highest placed midfield team Alpine, leaving much room for improvement. The retirement of Sebastian Vettel from the sport was a wake-up call for the team, leading to the acquisition of Fernando Alonso to fill the void. The Spaniard's arrival brought renewed hope to Silverstone, with Alonso believing that the team has the potential to help him clinch a third F1 championship. While the team has talked up its potential since its transformation into Aston Martin, it has yet to deliver on its promises consistently. With the new technical rules in place, the team must now aim to move up the order and establish itself at the front of the midfield. Thankfully, Aston Martin has everything it needs to achieve this goal, from vast resources to a widespread technical recruitment drive. The time for excuses has passed, and the team must now deliver on its promise it has shown in glimpses. With the right attitude and commitment, Aston Martin can establish itself as a genuine contender in the F1 Championship. Unlike many other teams who have opted to develop an evolution upon its cars from last season, Aston Martin has admitted to changing 90% of its package for this year. After wind tunnel numbers suggested they could even eclipse the midfield group entirely, pre-season testing and race in Bahrain appeared to be hugely encouraging for Aston Martin. The AMR 23 looked competitive in performance runs and even stronger across the race simulations Alonso conducted arousing speculation that the team could even be ahead of Mercedes as the third best side. The steps being taken to get into a competitive position and mix it at the front makes Aston Martin one of the most exciting projects to track across all of motorsport. But with that comes added expectation, and it has only intensified with the eye-opening times the teams achieved in testing. Managing to do what no other midfield operating team has done in the turbo hybrid era in emerging from the midfield pack and contesting the podium places frequently would mark a tremendous turnaround of unexpected proportions for the Silverstone residing entity. The British marquee represents the ambitious midfield entry the sport has desperately needed for a while, one willing to take risks and make big moves to challenge the might of the biggest teams on the grid. Such shows of intent have led Alonso to invest in the project, representing a big coup for the team after Vettel's shock departure potentially could have left it in a precarious position. But while the building blocks are in place to catapult it towards competing at the front, Aston Martin must utilize its current infrastructure and personnel better to demonstrate that it is in ideal shape to make the next step once it inherits its new facility. The Bahrain GP displayed positive signs that the tide might finally be turning for Aston Martin. However, the positive showing in Sakia has considerably ramped up the pressure on the team. Aston Martin simply has to start delivering on expectations when it matters. They have started with the Bahrain Grand Prix last weekend, and they have to continue on that foot. Now over to you. Do you think Aston Martin and Alonso will win the F1 titles this season? Let me know what you think in the comments section below.